Hi, this is David Davis from Axel Tech Media. I'm super excited to be here at VMware's headquarters in Palo Alto, California, and I'm joined by Sonny Dua. He's a senior member of the technical staff at VMware. How you doing, Sonny? I'm good, David. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for joining me again. Thank you. So, um, you know, VROps, uh, the VMware's cloud management solution, you're a big expert in it. I've followed your blog. I've watched your, your webinars that you've done. Um, you've created a lot of great content out there for anybody who wants to learn the Realize Operations Manager. And you know, I usually start these off by asking my interviewee a question. Mm -hmm. But do you have a question for me? I do. So we were discussing this uh, back at VMworld as well. And you, I saw that you shied away and you didn't answer the question. <laughs> and the, ba back then, Ivan was with me, Ivan Rahabak, who is part of uh, Cloud Management Business Unit as well. And uh, I think around three years back, me and Ewan sat down and, and started to look at our customers' problems in terms of performance management, capacity management, et cetera. And uh, we had VR ops back then, we looked at VC ops as well, and then VR ops on hand. And we were asking each other uh, that customers look at all this data and they, they ask us uh, whether my infrastructure is performing well or not. So the mm -hmm. use, term used was performance. And, uh, they, we, we basically wanted to gauge in terms of how we can measure performance. So the question to you is, uh, is how do you measure performance when you go ahead and start troubleshooting in your lab? <laughs> I mean, I think traditionally I would go look at, you know, the CPU and memory and storage and things like that, but really I have to also remind myself to look at it from an end user perspective. I mm -hmm. mean, on my laptop, if I launch something, is it is it working fast for me from my perspective? Yep, agreed. So if you look at VMware and its customers, so essentially we deal with infrastructure teams or IT teams, right? So they are the one who are getting these calls asking them, my application is working slow and uh, the next thing which the infrastructure or the IT guy checks is, what do you check in this case? So that's my question to you. Yeah, yeah, the dashboard, CPU, memory, storage, network, mm -hmm. and say, everything looks good to me. Okay, right? okay, great. So I think, uh, I think if you go one step deeper into this and double click into this, let's talk about just CPU. Uh -huh. uh, when people look at CPU, they look at it at various levels. The first thing they would do is go ahead and look at CPU at the virtual machine level. What is my CPU utilization? And that's where they start. If they see that the CPU utilization is hitting the roof, like let's say 85%, 90%, they assume it could be a performance issue. It mm -hmm. could cause performance uh, problems in their infrastructure or, or on their application. Taking a step back, if you look at the IT administrator, he immediately starts looking at the ESXi node and he starts looking at what is the utilization which I have. So he goes to vCenter and starts looking at those numbers which uh, pop up and tell you how much you're utilized on CPU and memory. And if he finds a server which is really running hot on 60, 70, or 80 percent, depending upon how you think or what you think is hot, mm -hmm. they start reacting to it and start troubleshooting the problem. Right. Uh, essentially, that is what we have learned over a period of time. I remember starting my career around 15 years ago, starting with computers. The first thing which you do when your computer is working slow, you start looking at utilization mm -hmm. and see what is taking up everything. Right. Uh, in case of virtual infrastructure, it's a little different because you know that it's a shared infrastructure, yeah. right? So what you actually need to look at is not utilization because you've already entitled somebody to use X amount of CPU and RAM. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's using 80% or 90% of it, it should not matter to you. As an infrastructure, as a service provider, you've promised that CPU and memory to that particular business. But if you, if you look at it from an IT admin perspective, the primitive thought of looking at utilization comes from the physical world. Yeah. Um, all I'm trying to say here is that it should change when you move to the virtual world. Okay. And uh, the way I look at it is contention. Contention mm -hmm. is the term, uh, which is an English term as well, as well as a metric which is available within VRealize Operations Manager, which allows you to actually go ahead and understand that how your virtual machines are contending for resources. Okay. So it's more okay. around uh, what is my demand, uh, compared to what I'm able to use. And the difference between that is actually contention. So if I'm demanding for 80% CPU, uh, which is a metric in VR ops, but I'm only able to use 40% CPU, which is CPU usage percentage, then it's clear that 40, I'm contending for 40% of that CPU, which I wanted to use, but I couldn't. And that's the magic of VR ops, which can immediately help you derive and figure out where the problem is, and whether it's at the infrastructure layer or whether it's at the application layer. If you do not see any contention and the virtual machine is getting whatever it has asked for, then you know that uh, it's not a problem with the infrastructure. 
you need to go back and look at the application. Mm, okay, so using VR ops, we can uh, try to figure out it, whether or not we have a contention issue mm -hmm. versus just a utilization issue. Because utilization may or may not be a problem. I mean, using 80% mm -hmm. CPU might be just normal. Absolutely. That's why you virtualized it the first place, right? Because right. your servers were using 10% and you said, oh, what if I bunch these 10 servers together in a virtual infrastructure or a, on a ESXi box and everybody uses 10%, I still hit 90%, let's say, if everybody's not using 10% at the same time. And what you spoke about earlier was utilization, and that's capacity. That's not performance. So it's it's important that as an infrastructure, as a service provider, which each of our customers are, whether mm -hmm. it's to external customers or whether internal business app owners, they're all providing virtual machines. Right. And virtual machines comes with CPU, memory, disk, and network. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you're able to measure performance for all of these four resources for your virtual machines. And uh, that's that's where the concept of uh, contention comes into picture. Okay. Yeah. So what if, uh, you know, I try to look at my internal on-premises infrastructure as uh, at my own private cloud, let's say that I'm allocating resources, I'm providing IT as a service, if mm -hmm. you will, to my end users. What kind of SLAs, you know, could I provide them? Could I develop some sort of performance SLAs that I can report on and, mm -hmm. and tell them if I'm meeting them or not? Now that's a great question. Um, and I, I probably probably want to go back to what is an SLA, right? Service level agreement. Yeah. So you, you promise the business that I will go ahead and give you this level of service for a particular object, resource, or whatever you're providing as a service, right? And this is the level, this is the percentage which I promised to you. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the customers today are using SLAs for availability, which are up and down situations, which okay. are simpler to measure. Right, right? yeah. But the challenge is uh, a performance SLA, which you just asked for, right? If you look at uh, tools around, around the IT ecosystem today, it's very difficult to find a tool which can allow you to figure out what a performance SLA is. And at the same time, uh, you cannot really have a performance SLA, which is, uh, you cannot really have a single performance SLA as well, or, because that will be a physical, uh, that'll be equivalent to a physical infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. So if I say that I have a single tier, and I have a single performance SLA on top of it, and that is applicable to everybody, then everybody would be expecting that I have the best performance. Right. So, First of all, in order to have a performance SLA, you need to make sure that you have different level of service categories, right? Okay. And, and this goes back to the primitive uh, you know, uh, process of chopping off your resources in a way that you have a gold tier, a silver tier, yeah. and maybe a bronze tier. So you need to have tiers. And once you have tiers, you can set up performance SLAs against them. Okay. And uh, the way we make it easier with VR Ops is that we give you the contention metric. So the CPU contention and the memory contention are the two counters which you can actually use to set up performance SLAs for uh, CPU and memory resources. Disk latency, which is known to all the storage guys in the world, is another metric which you can use to go ahead and set up performance SLAs for storage. Okay. And then for network, it's really a big world, right? I mean, it, it, it depends on where you are in the network phase. But I think drop packets is what I have figured out could be the number one contending issue. If you have CPU problems, memory problems, or storage problems, you might end up dropping packets. Uh -huh. And then if you have network issues, you will definitely drop packets in your uh, virtual infrastructure. So these are the four metrics which you can use. Okay. And for each of the tiers that you have, you can define what is the percentage of uh, resistance you can have for these metrics. And that's how you can go ahead and create a simple line between infrastructure and applications and tell that whether it's a problem in the infrastructure or is it a problem in the application. And if the application owner comes back and argues, no, my application is fine, but I need better performance because your infrastructure is not able to do it, then you go ahead and offer a better tier, which could be equivalent to a physical tier mm -hmm. with zero over commitment, hence no contention, hence no performance issues. Okay. Yeah. And so once you have these tiers and these performance SLAs, mm -hmm. can you then develop, say, like dashboards for monitoring those tiers and SLAs? Absolutely. So uh, I will not take the credit for this. Uh, Ivan Rahabak, uh, uh, who's my buddy and a good friend, he's elder to me, but uh, he looks younger because of all <laughs> his uh, exercising stunts. But yeah, th this guy is, uh, is, has a ton of experience. And for the past, uh, he, he's kind of a mentor to me. And uh, he's kind of helped me understand uh, a lot of things within the product and also around the technology. And Ivan was able to basically go ahead and uh, create a workshop for all our customers, which is called Operationalize Your World. Oh. It's available on his uh, blog. It's called Virtual Red Dot 
uh, dot info okay. and the virtual red dot is basically Singapore uh, that's mm -hmm. what it represents but uh, Ivan uh, made those dashboards I contributed uh, being a QE coming in and telling him this is wrong and remove that etc but we were able to create dashboards which can plot all these performance SLAs using super metrics within VR ops uh, it might not be the most used feature of the product, mm -hmm. but it's the most intelligent fe feature of the product, I can really? tell you. Okay. And it's been around since day number one. So, And the enhancements have been really great, where you can actually do comparative analysis and uh, derive a number out of it in everything related to mathematics. So you can use Supermetrics to go ahead and derive SLAs for each of these service tiers, plot them in the dashboards, and then uh, with more Supermetrics in picture, you can actually go ahead and uh, calculate as in what is the percentage of SLA failures you have had over a period mm -hmm. of time. Okay. So that kind of gives you the complete picture of not only knowing when you're breaching SLAs, but also able to understand what is the overall threshold or how many times you have breached those SLAs over a period of time. And that could be a good nomenclature for you to put in front of business and tell them that this is what I would support and if you need better, then get on, pay me more and get onto a better infrastructure. Right, I like that. Yeah. So, and then what about moving outside of just vSphere? Mm -hmm. I mean, with, with VROps's extensibility, can you use management packs and then pr provide SLAs for maybe databases or applications? No, yeah, that's a great question. I think if, if it was VC ops era, I would say no, because back then uh, we were not treating all the objects in the ecosystem as uh, tier one objects or I call them first level citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the VR ops in place, which is 6.0, which has been like four years, five years now, and uh, going strongly forward as well, we have a number of ecosystem management packs available from a number of partners uh, in the ecosystem who, who are able to send in all their objects and metrics into VR ops. And since we treat all of them equally as a first class citizens, we are able to run the same amount of uh, capacity algorithms or same amount of performance algorithms or super metrics on all of this as and when you want or on demand. Hence, I would, I would, I would tell you that you, would not, you should not just go ahead and start doing super metrics on everything. Mm -hmm. Define your use cases and based on those use cases, see what are the metrics which are required. Build those super metrics uh, in a lab environment if you can and see the results. And once you like the results, you can port them over into your production environments. Because it's a heavy operation at the end of the day. You're increasing the number of objects, increasing the number of yeah. metrics, et cetera. So be careful around that. Okay, yeah. okay, great advice. Well, you know, I've followed your blog for a long time. Can you tell the audience about your blog and then where to find more information about VRealize operations? Sure, absolutely. So I, I think I, I kind of dwelled into the best practices on supermetrics because for the past 12 months, uh, in fact, the last 2016, me and Simon Eady from Extrovert, uh -huh. we have been working or we've been delivering a session every month, which is not kind of a uh, death by PowerPoint, but it's more of going ahead and giving an introduction to a particular feature of VR Ops and then going ahead and demo demoing the feature and going through the motions in terms of how it looks like, feels like, how you configure it. So we did around 12 hour of uh, course courses or 12 hour course material, which is free of cost, of course. It's all on YouTube. I watched YouTube. them, they're, they're very good. Oh, great, yeah. great. So uh, the blog is called vexpress.blogspot.com. I've still not ported over from the free blog spot, but I like it. Uh, it works. Yeah. And uh, I, I have all those videos up in there. And Simon has it as well. Uh, we've had a bunch of speakers uh, from the industry come in and speak about various different ways of how they have used VR ops. So it's it's kind of good. You, um, one, I mean, I would encourage for somebody who's starting with VR ops or yeah. even want to go into advanced uh, um, you know, study around VR ops, they can go ahead and listen to that series. Apart from that, there are a number of blogs which are available. I know you also blog a lot about VR ops, and I, I follow that as well. <laughs> so it's all about the community, right? We right, follow right. each other, we learn from each other. And, uh, and yeah, from VMware's perspective, we have a, a walkthrough site which helps you go through each and every feature. That's nice, we yeah. have a webinar series which uh, runs from VMware Marketing and VMware TAM. And that's open to public as well. All the recordings are out there. Um, just Google them and you'll be able to get them. Okay. And, but, and again, uh, there are labs available on hands-on labs, which is, I think, a great feature. That's where I learn most of the stuff because I don't get time to go into trainings. But yeah, that's, that's another resource which is good for uh, people to use. Excellent. Thanks so much for your time today, Sunny. You're welcome. Thanks, David. <laughs>